Brass Thorn's journal. The sky swirls and the wolves congregate. It is time we settle this matter. As we board the main flagship of the Sky Werewolves, my mind is reeling. I have done my best to anticipate this encounter, but all preparation from the mind of the analytic falls short under the seething chaos of the opening navigational cabin. The wolves, men, and werewolves tending their riggings of the airship hardly pause from their duties to cast us a snarl as Epitaph and I cross the main deck. And to know that we've been at war with these challenging creatures for a month has shown true resolve and organization on their part to be able to hold their composure of their airship so efficiently. They have dwindled their resources, especially in wartime, and they stave off hunger and injury with a resolve much more than the average pirate crew could manage. A brief glance at Epitaph and he looks like he's carved out of wood. Sword already drawn, and eyes darting around for openings, flanks, claws in the dark. We enter into a den of growling frenzy. Outnumbered is an understatement. The sky werewolves from the desert, the snowy mountains of the north, the jungles, the swamps, all manner of airship captain from what seems to span the entire globe are present. The majority of the fleet's captains have congealed into this one cabin to hold council, and the eyes of gold and green glare hate into our presence. The flagship is a formidable vessel imbued with technology that should not belong to the likes of pirates or even members of this planet in general. The wolf we interrogated was right, power that doesn't smell of the realm. I take in as much of it as I can with rapid study of their working tools and mechanisms in the poor torchlight but the fear is refusing to be held at bay at this point. These wolves are the embodiment of a lifetime of hard war and ruthless discipline. My gloves tighten around my revolvers, and my throat goes dry under the weight of such power. If they ambush us, we're dead. But something happens. At that moment, I remember all that was led up to this point and my mind goes from a listless cowardice to a bladed whip of synaptic flourish. We shall prevail, and every fang under the moon won't stop us now from singing the songs of Threnody. I go over the game plan in my head in the span of one boot stride, and I trust that diplomacy shall serve as our finest weapon in this siege. <laughs> Who wish to talk? 
best have the skull in their paws. You all know your ranks. It is time. choice of words, freedom. I know more about your goals than you may understand. I know that it has taken years, decades, generations of your fallen kin to reach this moment. And now you stand before someone who has the power to culminate a wrath from beyond this realm's imaginations to silence this restless gestalt of stubbornness. What secrets you hold behind your eyes, Ulrich, are revealed to me from that seal on your arm. How do you know about the seal? Silence, Rossare! Ah, uh, 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 Captain Rossare. I have the skull. I know what you want, and it's not the manor. You seek the door of light, and I will have you know that your brother Wolf, we help captive, had revealed this to us. I hope you have kept him well, for if it were not for the honesty of your brother Wolf, we would not have pursued this course of action. I can already imagine how this will turn out. You will not stop until you have served the deeds of your accursed master, the entity which speaks through shadows to you all and brands dark magical seals onto your newly born children. You will not rest until you have either fulfilled your servitude or died a thousand times over. You will not be free this way, and I do not wish for this madness to continue any further. No more espionage tactics trying to probe the manor. No more impaling the heads of your fallen dead on my bridge. It brings me no pleasure at all to war with you wolves. To truly strike an accord, we must make amends with what has transpired and proceed further with what I know lay on the table for you. The only way a true ceasefire will ever be established is that I must give you something greater than this door of light. It will have to be greater than all loot in the treasured isles to bear beyond the weight of the suffering generations the Sky Wolves had to endure over time and endless plunder of your breed and honor. What I have to offer is a rebellion against your master and a chance of freedom. This bill trapped is a scallywag twofold. Tear off their jaws and make them kiss the gunner's daughter. No more games. We should string their innards up in the mizzen mast and have their lights and lillers. Toss their heads in the jaws of the figurehead. <laughs> Them some mighty taxing words from a human. In the past, we've been bitten with that promise from the High Mages and Warlords alike. They never, never kept their word. They have all fallen, and we have always paid with our suffering with scratches that will never heal. You have no power to combat that which enslaves us. To even know of our seal is a death sentence. And to think you can somehow change that. To think you can stand against that which devours doors of light. That which commands shadows deeper than even the accursed vampire could control. That which creates all the airships about you. What have you 
to offer that could change that. You had all best put it in your heads right now. Lady Epitaph is quickly becoming the most powerful sorceress in this realm. You think I'm a threat? <laughs> no matter what you believe, she has offered to help your kind. Any minute now, these jack-o'-lanterns by our side will speak to us, and she will let us know when the spell is ready. Once you are freed from your whispers in your heads, perhaps you will begin to understand our power. If a month of holding off your siege hasn't proven that enough, this is our gift to you, whether you accept it or not. No one should wear the branding of dark magic against their will. Second is the matter of this door of light we have in Epitaph Manor, the only stable portal that has stood for as many generations as you Sky Wolves. I am certain there is a reason why your accursed master has chosen to claim this one last, but I will not speculate. All I will say is that these portals are a gift, and they are not to belong to any single entity. What we fight for is freedom, not just for in this realm, for all realms. If one entity controls them, you will have acted as the herald to countless other realms, servitude under the same fate. My wife comes from a land deep into the stars beyond countless horizons, and her magic is something this realm has rarely seen. This man to my right, Professor Brassthorn, comes from yet another realm, and the technology within his airship would make your vessels pale in comparison, trust me. We are individuals who've traversed these portals for years, and by seeking to kill us, is to kill any chance of studying these portals and finally garnering your much-deserved freedom. Tonight, your son's fate of growing up in eternal servitude or fighting against it lies with you, Captain Ulrich. Our conversation with the captured werewolf revealed that the entire clan has been subjected to slavery by some unknown entity through the use of a cursed seal upon their arms. I quickly sketched a copy of the seal's design in order to take it to my cauldron parlor in an attempt to study its origin, power, and possibly who or what placed it. If I can find the answers, my ritual counterspell would be more effective and could last long enough to give me the time to find a way to permanently break the curse. My trusted assistant, the parlor gargoyle Donkmar, will help me. Though the smallest of the gargoyles, he is the only one with a spirit to match my own. Answers! I need to find the answers! I know I've seen something similar to this before. But where? Yes, hold on to that one. It has the steps I need for the ritual I want. Hand me those five on the left shelf. I know I've looked through them already, but maybe I've missed something. It's got to be here somewhere. I know I've seen it. Enough! Sorry. I'm just a little pressed for time here. Yes, you're right. I do need a little something. I'll take a moment and have some tea that will help me center my thinking and maybe streamline it so I can remember where I've seen that seal before. Yes, much better. Hmm. Could you bring me the trunk from the bottom of that potion closet? Yes, it's old stuff, but not that old. Don't try aging me any more than necessary. It's from my university days. I'm getting the feeling that what I'm looking for is in there. Wait. 
Ah, here, I think it's in this old textbook. It could pito. What's this between the pages? This is it. The similarities are uncanny. Well, it's some old notes a friend of mine shared with me on a day I missed this class because of illness. The class was History of Illicit Curses. This page of notes is from a section on unethical binding spells, specifically the use of seals. It seems a few unsavory mages would bind their victims using a seal of their own design placed on parchment and concealed somewhere on the victim's person. In one case, the mage placed a parchment seal in the lining of a corset which he then gifted to the victim, a young woman from a powerful family he wished to align himself with. She had refused his proposal of marriage several times, but upon wearing the corset became very enamored with the mage and agreed to set a wedding date. Because of the cursed seal, she would also refuse to remove the corset for any extended period of time. Her family's wedding tradition was the thing that saved her. It was tradition for the bride to spend the three days before the wedding with her grandmother, learning from the matriarch her lessons about marriage, relaxing in healing waters for several hours, and receiving a sage cleansing and spells of protection. The bride reluctantly undressed to enter the healing waters, and the grandmother gathered the clothing and took it back to the house. After a few hours in the bath, the bride began to question why she was there and was distraught to learn that she was to be married. She demanded to return home to find out why a marriage had been arranged, but the grandmother, being wise, suggested she conduct the blessing and protective spells before she dressed and began her journey home. Once completed, the bride began to dress, but grew violently ill when the corset was brought close to her. The grandmother, suspecting foul magic, tore the garment lining to reveal the cursed seal. Apparently, it took a combination of nature, spirit, and fire magic to destroy the seal. Doesn't really say what happened to the mage, just that he was severely punished. The seal on this paper doesn't look like any of the ones in the book, but it's uncanny how similar it is to the seal branded on the werewolves. If I'm correct, I should be able to use the same combination of magic to nullify the seal that is binding the werewolves to this entity. Uh, I hate to desecrate a body, but... Donkmar, I need you to cut the seal off two of the dead werewolves and bring it to me. I don't want to try this on a living creature in case I... I don't want to think about what would happen. Please hurry. Oh, and send in one of the golems. There. That should be what I need. Thank you for being so fast. Gollum, please stand over there against the wall and hold this. No time like the present. Spiritus me de Manu. It's working. Come on. Spiritus me de Manu. The seal. It's reversed and it's holding. All right. Now to try it a little stronger. I've got to get this to work on all the werewolves at the same time. Gollum, take and hold the second seal. I'm going to put more into the ritual this time. Ready? Spiritus me de Manu. Crystal. Ah, not what I had hoped for. How am I going to get this amplified enough for the pack without seriously singeing off werewolf fur? It's as though trying to increase the spirit magic, I'm causing the fire magic to increase exponentially. There's got to be a better way to increase the spirit magic to amplify the ritual. We do not have the time and I do not have the energy to do this spell on each werewolf individually. Are you ready, my love? That's it! Just a moment, my lord. You've just given me the answer I need. Quickly, Donkmar. Help me carry these things to the octopus lounge. We'll need to run. Oh, but douse the golem first. I don't want that smell permeating the manor. Yes, I'll explain, but start setting things up. We need to conduct the ritual in the octopus lounge for two reasons. 
first. Remember how I was trying to gather more spiritual magic so as to increase the power of the spell to affect all the wolves at the same time? The octopus lounges run on spiritual energy. I can utilize the additional spiritual energy instead of increasing the spiritual magic. I should get the desired effect without anyone bursting into flames. Secondly, I can broadcast the energy of the ritual through the octopus lounge transmitters. The pulse of magic can ride the frequency of the broadcast to all the airships. We'll use these transmitters on the west wall. Don't touch any on the south wall. It appears the gentlemen have it set for plan B, and the hailing signal has been sent. I'm not sure it will work. We've never tried this before, but perhaps Professor Brassthorne is the key. God is forbid that either plan fails. Why am I even holding your father's skull while this dog won't keep his tongue? You best muzzle your pup, Ulrich. His insubordination reflects poorly on you. <sighs> Give me the skull, it's my turn to speak now. Ulrich, you listen well. My crew will not tolerate this diversion from these humans any longer. You are worthless to think these weaklings truly seek to help us with their two-penny spells and false worship. We have gathered here from all corners of the realm and you are stricken by a simple parlor trick. We give the doors of light to the shadow and we will be freed. We shall raid this manor now with full fang of the sky walls and be done with it. It has been what we have strove for our entire lives. Your father's head which rests in my hands died for this. Do not lead us down the path of cowardice. Your throat, which I hold in my hand, should be ripped for that. You speak of cowardice and what my father has sacrificed. You speak of freedom. You have already condemned yourself to this servitude. You may as well be dead. Serving out the other sentence of slavery from beyond the veil. You think we would simply be done with it? We will never be free this way. Another shadow will come forth. Another task. Another wretched bidding. Another promise of freedom. For the first time in my life, the only voice I hear is my own. And if we are going to sing with songs of triumph for the fallen dead, we must join Trinity. Release me. You challenge me? Very well. We should go. Not yet. Ulrich can still fix this. They are blood, after all. My fellow captains, heed this warning. There are no fathoms deep enough for how far my brother Wolf has fallen. If you are to fly under his flag, let it be known you are flying into eternal submission. Threnody is no better than the shadows, and your commander has lost the edge of his fangs. If you wish to be free, follow me, and reclaim your honor. If not, you shall see the end of my broadside soon enough. 
Do not do this, brother. Do not go back to being a slave. I will be a slave no longer. Garunda's warship is turning about. Professor, cast your spyglass. Garundo's standing at the end of the prow. He just took his claws to the seal on his arm and cut deep. He's holding something aloft in his hands. It appears he's about to smash it. Oh no. Captain Ulrich, it's- My father's skull! Are to starboard! Man the main cannons! Throw moving sails in a taste of the fire fangs! You were right, Professor. We should have left. Get ready. Plan B? Plan B. Lady Epitaph, this is Professor Brassthorn. Are you ready for Plan B? Standing by in the octopus lounge, waiting for coordinates. Launch protocol portal 3. Black Rose. Quick, my lord, back to the Lucid. <laughs> Professor Brassthorn, calling the Black Rose. Emergency! Captain Byron Silvermane, do you read? Must be Captain Silvermane of the airship Black Rose. Responding to uh, an emergency frequency from Epitaph Manor. The portal opened in the Steamlands. Looks like you lads could be using some help. This is Lord Epitaph. You showed up just in time. The five warships around the manor are hostile. Target and defend our home, Captain Silvermane. We owe you one. Let's blast these walls into the depths of Tartus. It has been so long since I last saw the power of a steam land airship. Truly exhilarating. What are those lightning strikes coming from the broadside? Tesla demons. Gifts from a different time. At this rate, they'll all be dead in a matter of minutes. Look at Ulrich. He seems conflicted, as if he knows he must now cast his hand across his own pack. Professor, join me. Said in our capture. 
The road to righteousness is a hard path. They are still my kin, my pack. This is a bond humans could never understand. We all have a lifetime of lies. It is hard to see the truth, even when it stands right before us. They are reacting to years of deceit, and they will die to achieve their honor. However misguided, I don't even know if the decision I made is the right one. Look at the new door of light in the sky. You have made the right choice, and we will stand with you for the rest of our lives here in the realm. To see that the sky wolves fly unbound and sing the songs of Threnody for your fallen dead? Professor, call off the Black Rose. But do it, Tap. Right away. Airship Black Rose, this is Professor Brathstorm. The readings indicate the temporal decay of the portal will come to a close soon. You may call off your strike. Well done, Captain Silvermane. We will keep in touch in the dark airwaves. Send my regards to the home world. All right, lads, good work. Now you be on my own be a favor. And don't back out of it. The time will come when I call upon you. Allow me to introduce you to the real owner of Epitaph Manor, Captain Ulrich. Lady Epitaph, if you please. just a friend, and an ally to help fight against the Entity, which shall no longer enslave you. You have my word of honor, Captain. My brother's ship. I thought for certain you would not rest, and even go so far as to ram his airship into your manor and perish. But he's retreating. They all are. Epitaph, I... No need for words at this point. Professor, let's go. prevailed, my love. It's good to see you in one piece. To think, all this, over a portal. It is lovely, isn't it? Werewolves, airships, gargoyles, wicked magic, mad science, and now, a lifetime of rebellion. You know Epitaph? I kind of like that name. What name? Trinity.
and transmission.